Hello, I'm Joshua Farnsworth and welcome to my workshop. If you remember, quite a few months ago I began a project building this desk for my two oldest sons for their Christmas present. Well, I've missed that date by quite a long ways, uh, but I wanted to use this desk as a way to teach all of you some of the basic joinery techniques uh, that are very common in hand tool woodworking, such as dovetails and building legs uh, with peg mortise and tenon, through mortise and tenon, just a whole bunch of great joinery and, and great processes that will help you build a lot of different types of furniture and woodworking. Uh, but then I got set back quite a bit by moving to a new house, a new, starting a farm here and remodeling this workshop, turning it from an RV garage into a workshop and uh, the process of turning it into a school as well. So I've got a little sidetracked, but I want to get back on and finish this desk up here in the next few videos. I've got some exciting techniques to show you. And as you can see, a breadboard top uh, is a way to keep this desktop from warping. You can see there's mortise and tent, or those tenons here that stick into these mortises. It's a really neat process. And I was going to just uh, go through the lengthy process of trying to film all of this as a tutorial for you, but then I realized, wait a minute, this uh, winter, Will Myers was here and we were filming one of the three DVDs that we filmed uh, about building a collapsible trestle table. And he goes through the process. And since Will is a much better teacher and a much better uh, craftsman than I am, I thought, figured I'd just let Will teach you. So I'm gonna include this his video, his portion of that video here. And if you're interested in getting on a list for being notified when that DVD is released sometime this winter or in the upcoming spring, just click here and it'll take you to a little page where you can put your name and email address and we'll notify you when it comes out. So take it away, Will. Okay, our glue has dried on our top now and we're ready to uh, get started with the uh, breadboard ends. First thing we gotta do is square this up. And it's not imperative that it's perfectly 90 degrees, but it is uh, that it be straight. So uh, for the breadboards to, to work. So to start out with, uh, I'm just going to uh, use a framing square and just come out here And I'm gonna make a couple of marks because this is gonna make sense in a minute, I promise. One at the edge. Don't let the framing square move after you make the mark. And one out here towards the middle. So now I'm gonna come back the other way. Line the square up with that center mark. Make another mark over here at this edge. So now what we've got is a, uh, a good place to uh, secure or to uh, lay out our, our straight line from. So what I'm using here, this is the actual breadboard and I, the edges are uh, nice and straight. So I'm just gonna simply lay this on here. And uh, we don't want it to move while we're in the process of marking. All we want is just a straight line. That's what we're after more than anything else. I said it's not a imperative that it be square, just straight. So there we go, we got a nice straight line. And uh, so now we want to clamp this down, saw it off. And white pine as we already talked about, it's pretty soft, so I'm going to use this uh, uh, piece of scrap here, and we're going to secure it with two hole fasts. So now we've got a, uh, that's almost off the front of the edge. Now we got it. 
and just use a uh, cross cut saw and I would saw or I, the way I do it saw off the line a little bit we really need that line to kind of go by so just uh, saw it right across It's soft, it saws nice. It smells great too. Well, it smells good every time you do anything. So, uh, now at this point, I need to be sure that I'm square this way. I can see my line and I stayed on it pretty well. We're going to clean this up a little bit anyway. But I want to make sure this is not leaning one way or the other. The reason is we're going to use a uh, cutting gauge to start the tin and we'll be gauging from making a mark top and bottom so we need this end to be uh, pretty well square and it's it's not too bad considering who did it so Keep eye on your line. You don't want to get, you know, dig a hole somewhere. Make sure you're pretty even with it. Okay, we're looking pretty good right there. I do believe. Okay, so now the end's squared up. Um, we'll take a... Uh, cutting gauge and I make these tenons about an inch and a half long something like that so I'm going to measure out an inch and a half on my gauge here and it's not a this this is not a number set in stone by any means you can uh, go longer or shorter so this is going to be our shoulder this is where the breadboard is going to start or come back to rather and I'm going to make several passes and get as deep as I can get And a cutting gauge, uh, I think we've used it, uh, has a little knife instead of a, a scratcher. That's something I forgot to mention. Just a little knife blade there. And in white pine, you can get a pretty deep cut. Because like I said, it's, it is a soft wood. So there we go. And you can make a little scratch on the ends just for a reference. doesn't have to be deep. Okay. Now I'm going to flip this thing over and uh, do the other side and then uh, we'll get ready to uh, we'll lay out the uh, uh, thickness of the tenon and we will get set up to start cutting the waste away from it. All right, we cut our shoulder line. Now we need to lay out the width or not, I guess that'd be the width, wouldn't it? The thickness of the tenon. And the way we're gonna come up with that is we're, we're gonna be cutting the uh, little mortises for the tenons themselves that will be kind of encased in the breadboard 
with uh, this 3 8 chisel, same one we used earlier. So, and I'm just going to, I've got the teeth set uh, just right at, I can't see it, uh, right at the width of that chisel. Yeah, we're good. So now I'm just going to, going to uh, center that where maybe you can see it roughly. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, on the thickness of this top. And so now we're just going, going to uh, scribe around the edges and the end here. And then, of course, around this end, too. Okay. With that done, we're going to use a, uh, a plow plane to start removing some of this waste. And this is a Stanley 45. Um, nothing special. I have a, just a 3 8 iron in it. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to plow a groove back here at this line that we cut and we've got that nice deep line cut so hopefully that'll keep us from tearing anything out over here where we want to keep and of course over here it doesn't matter because it's waste the trick to this is excuse me a pretty shallow shallow bite on the iron on the plow and of course it needs to be just inside that cut mark also so very important uh Another thing, uh, why are you not using something like a moving philister? Uh, and that is normally what you would use, but these tendons are a little bit longer than most of these philisters will open up. We're about a quarter inch more. So we, uh, it's just simply not quite wide enough. Um, Joshua has one of these uh, newer uh, Veritas ones and it will open up that much. So if you have one of them, that will work. And it's a little bit easier to use than the way we're going to do it. But what this does, it just it allows you to make a, a bigger tenon than a lot of the joinery planes would allow you to normally. So before I start plowing, there's one thing I need to do, and I almost forgot it. Right here on the side where we come off, I'm going to make a little cut down to my gauge line down there. I need to darken that just a little bit so I can uh, so I can see it. And I haven't set the fence on the uh, plow. I mean the depth stop. And the reason being is I'm going to stop at these gauge lines on either end when I get down to them. And truth be told, we're actually uh, I doubt my. My two gauge marks are dead in the center, so actually I would have to reset the depth stop on the other side. And so we're just going to stop when we get down to the uh, gauge mark there. I'm going to go ahead and break some of this away. I don't want to, I want to preserve this end right here because actually a little bit of that will show through the end of the breadboard. So, so uh, just kind of take your time starting. Be sure that you're just inside that knife mark. And we've got a pretty shallow cut here. And all the, <clears throat> this plane and working it like this, what we're doing is basically separating the long grain fibers of this waste here. It makes them easy to remove and we get a nice straight, straight shoulder, which is uh, very much key to making this work.
you know, I'm just about down to my line. And I'm just almost right on it down there. So, okay. At that point, I'm going to stop. There's several things you can do at this point. And I need a chisel, and I know it's probably buried underneath here. Well, there's the skinny one. Oh, right there's the big one. If, uh, you know, your grain's pretty straight, you can uh, just come along and do that right there. Gets rid of most of it. See, like, like right there, it's diving down a little bit. So, and I actually went just a little bit into my... Uh, below where my stop mark needs to be. Uh, let's go back. So once you get uh, most of this off, there's several things we can do to remove the rest or to work down the line, but you don't want to quite split it down the line. You want to plane it down to the line. And of course, don't get wild and run your chisel into the top, which I almost did right there. So you can see it's a pretty wide top, so there's a lot of wood really right here to remove. It goes pretty quick. Okay, like I said, there's several ways to uh, deal with this from this point. You can uh, just use your chisel and get, uh, get a lot of this. Got grain diving right there. I'm wait to plane that. So what I've done there is uh, just with the chisel, I removed most of it, and you can keep going. But if uh, something like a jack plane. Uh, see with the groove plow we've made a clearance for this little bit of casting that's left so actually you can get a get your jack plane in there work on it um, another plane that works really wonderfully it's one of my favorites but the they're kind of expensive is this is a this is a ten and a half carriage maker rabbit plane and if you'll notice of course the iron goes all the way across and uh, this right here is a, a wonderful place to uh, utilize one of these this one is not set imagine that What's nice about it is, is it can go all the way up to that, to that shoulder. If it needs to. So. And just makes, uh, works beautifully, but they're, they're a little bit hard to find. And, Kind of expensive when you do. So. Not a half to half tool by any means. Okay, so now I'm, I'm pretty much there. I need to really watch my gauge lines now. And I'll stop it about where 
about half of it is gone. So that's pretty much it there. I think we've got this side. So now we have a nice flat shelf right there. One other little thing you can do, um, well, I got it, I guess, some of that fuzz. We were talking about uh, shoulder planes. Uh, if you don't have one, you don't have to have one for this, but I'll have to say this is one place where these things really shine is on this long shoulder right here. And you can just come right down through there and if you've got any squareness issues or anything like that, it just, uh, it really, really works great. So, uh, it gets a nice, perfect right angle right there. So, it's one thing if you do have one of these or have access to one of them, it's uh, on the breadboard end, it's a good thing to have. So. Okay, I'm going to flip it over, uh, do this on the other side, uh, exactly the same thing, and then we'll come back and lay out the tenons and uh, cut them. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, buying guides, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!